ways of, of going about that. We think the accelerator is a great for, framework for, for doing that. We've done that since 2017. So we have 108 uh, companies in our uh, portfolio through the accelerator. And as you mentioned, and I'm glad you highlighted it because I've only said it 147 times this year. We now have to see the impact unicorns that we that we see financed. And that's that's pretty fun. Um, I remember as uh, now uh, not a very old investor, but at least someone who's learned from uh, older investors that paper markups are not real. Uh, and so uh, so cherish them, but only with the same grace that you cherish your your failures, because, uh, you know, once we see uh, total value to paid in capital uh, from the fund, that's when we'll see the real value. But but yes, it is true. Uh, there are considerable value. I wanted to share just a note about why we invested in Flow, one of the companies uh, that's uh, that's presenting here, and why we think um, uh, we think XR is an interesting lens, pardon the pun, uh, to to investing. And I think it stems from from the basic fact that that we're happy to invest in in any kind of enabling technology or layer, so long as we can get our desired impact. I'll remind uh, everyone that the catapult is an impact investor, so we seek to to uh, to offer something else and something extra to the companies we uh, we invest in. Uh, we want our companies to have a social or uh, an environmental climate uh, impact, something that is measurable and something that we can uh, that we can see. And to me, the if you look at uh, social impact, for instance, to me a very obvious reality about the physical world is that it has limited bandwidth. Uh, there is something about the limits of people you can bring to one place or things you can channel through one set of atoms, uh, but it's not limited by bits. And I think that is true for uh, work that is needed in tough sectors. I think it's true for uh, for mental well-being. I think it's true for tourism. I think it's true for a wide range of different things, most of them probably that we've never uh, seen true cases of yet because they are cases waiting to be uh, innovated on. And I think uh, I think that's what makes it a really exciting landscape for us to, for us to invest in. Again, not because we are an XR um, investor, we aren't, we're impact investors, but because that is a great way to achieve impact in certain uh, categories. Much like we we are not a uh, solar uh, solar mini grid installations investor, but investing in solar mini grids in rural Africa is a great way to achieve both social and climate impact. So that's how we go about these uh, these things. And um, and as an enabling layer, and as uh, something that personally to me is is extremely exciting, uh, I'm quite happy with with what we've done, and we'll continue to continue to to look for that. And so long as uh, the physical world remains a limited bandwidth world, then then I think also the upside for digital products and uh, and for the further digitization of all of this sector remains virtually limitless, at least for this discussion and then related concepts. Uh, and I also think that uh, that some new developments in this sector also shows the potential uh, of that. So, so I'm quite, quite excited and uh, happy to share more notes about, uh, about our perspectives on this. But uh, I also see that we're closing up and uh, I appreciate my five minutes. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jan. Uh, I have a question for you, actually. Um, uh, like you said in the beginning here that uh, you guys invest uh, throughout the accelerator uh, quite early. Uh, now, when, when, the, when the companies start to grow and they need uh, follow-up investments, uh, yeah. are you involved in that as well? Yeah, so follow-up is is an interesting thing. Uh, our our follow-up fund uh, is currently at 19x. Uh, also, that's that's un, uh, we haven't realized it. Uh, so it it shows for us that if you follow on to investment, it's it's usually a great thing, especially coming from someone like us because we follow companies so closely. We see everything. Uh, we have tracking points, so we can see uh, the curve uh, and and the the lines, not just the dots. And and I think. Uh, that's what makes it a particularly appealing thing. However, we're broke. We're all out of funds. So I am currently fundraising. I realize now as an investor, I do more fundraising than I was actually a startup founder. <laughs> so uh, so that, that, that's what I'm busy for. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you and enjoy the time in Spain.
<laughs> Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Next up, um, we have Arve Överland, CEO of uh, Norwegian XR scale up company Cloudberry. Are you with us, Arve, here? Yes, I am. Can Perfect. you hear me? Perfect. Yes, can hear. we can hear you. Good. Great. So, uh, yeah, you can introduce yourself. Welcome to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we are. Uh, um, a uh, Norwegian uh, SaaS B2B uh, startup that is going into scale up. Uh, and uh, I was asked here today to uh, give a uh, tell the story of our funding journey uh, to give an example of how that can be seen from our side uh, since you guys uh, see it uh, from your side. Uh, so uh, I'll just jump right into it. Um, so uh, it started in uh, uh, 2018, uh, we were three founders, uh, a top gaming professional with 25 years and in the game gaming industry, AAA international gaming, and two exits behind them. Uh, then it was me, who was a global digital business executive with uh, 25 years of experience globally and one exit. Uh, and then we had a young math genius who at 24 had a master's from the Norwegian Technology University in Trondheim and almost 10 years already from professional gaming behind him. Uh, so he had coded uh, since he was 15 professionally. Um, and then and also within AR and VR. Uh, coincidences, like so many, brought us together. Uh, the chemistry was good. Uh, we decided we intended to revolutionize virtual reality in the B2B sector. Uh, so we started a company, Cloudberry. Uh, through our network, uh, we met an angel investor uh, who believed in the team. Uh, and um, let me see here, just got to get to my thing here. Yeah. Uh, through our network, we met an angel investor who believed in the team and invested 100,000 euros. So we existed on a shoestring budget as we explored the market and landed some paid pilots. At this point, we you must really call us a consultancy and not a software company. We quickly got a reputation for quality and we hired a couple of more guys. In 2019, then we were one year in, we realized that VRP, uh, VR was really a minimal viable product market. Building VR simulators is extremely complex. It takes highly experienced team. It takes time and time makes it expensive. Quality makes it expensive and we refuse to lower our standards. Companies were hesitant to go beyond the minimal viable product to a full-blown simulator because of those reasons. So the B2B market, they wanted in, they wanted the benefits of immersive, but to build one-offs at such a high cost, at such a, a long time scale of building, wasn't very tempting. Um, but, uh, so we had recently hit a problem, but luckily the Norwegian special forces had noticed what we were doing and approached us in 2019 uh, to a challenge to create a new kind of planning tool. They wanted to see if we could take their collected data that they collect in the field and convert it to one-to-one -one scale VR in under 15 minutes. The goal was one square kilometers with buildings and structures. We had two months to produce an MVP for this. This was a challenge that excited the whole team. We went back to our angel he put another 200,000 euros on the table and we accepted the challenge from the military. Two months later, we found ourselves at an army base and demoed this MVP for a live exercise with representatives from all branches of the special forces in Norway. The, the uh, challenge or the test and the, uh, um, uh, the exercise was a success. So two important things came out of this. One was a grant of 750,000 euros from the Norwegian Department of Defense to create a working beta of this technology. Uh, the other was that we realized that VR could be automated. It could be done, the whole workflow. Uh, and we also saw that, and we also had learned that it would never scale without automation. So our business model really changed overnight. Um, we had some funding now from the government uh, and we had a plan, so we started to hire and build a team that could do the impossible, automate the workflow, the complete workflow of building VR simulators. The real-time 3D graphics, activation interaction of objects and characters, creation of scenarios and the management of users. So basically it was automating 
the creation of video games, really. Uh, um, and and uh, uh, um, yeah, in 2020, the fun really started. We were going to disrupt the whole VR industry. We were now uh, uh, that we are now calling the metaverse, thanks to Mark Zuckerberg. We needed more people, we needed more money, but we had an obvious problem. We had no product, we had no customers. We had a fantastic idea and a team that could possibly do the impossible. So would we get funding before the cash ran dry? Uh, we started our rounds with VCs, angels and family offices. In these early meetings, some investors gave us good constructive feedback, others just shut the door. We listened and learned from those that gave us feedback and we started to see what investors were looking for in a company like ours. Our pitch deck went from really shitty to decent, from decent to okay, and from okay to pretty good. Uh, still, the answer was mostly no. Too early was the standard answer from investors. We had 10, 20, 30 meetings, it just went on. We kept our attitude up, important to keep the team motivated and happy. Culture in the company was good, uh, was actually great, but the burn rate was eating our cash. We, the founders, had gone a long time without income at this point, and it started to impact our personal lives. Uh, but in the office, we were all happy and smiling and taking the guys out for bears, and everything was super good. Um, but but uh, uh, we were kind of hitting our wall here, uh, hitting our heads against the wall. But we dug into our network and carved out some more investor meetings. In 2021, we got a hit. Um, investment arm of a large corporation saw the direct need of what we were building and came in with 400,000 euros on a note to be converted at the close around. So that gave us a lifeline. Suddenly we had some more cash in and we could breathe and we could, uh, uh, you know, your energy goes up when you get a little bit of, <laughs> when you can eat again. Um, and and uh, um, so we had some cash and we could breathe. Uh, with a solid investor in place, two family offices came in uh, together with uh, uh, 300,000 euros. So now we had 700. Uh, with that in place, uh, we got an inf investment fund interested. They did some hefty DD, but thankfully we used a very experienced lawyer and his team had assisted us in compiling a great data room. So we had everything, everything buttoned up, but they really went through absolutely everything and turned every stone and uh, technical DD and the whole, the whole thing. Um, it went good, so they actually came in with 1.5 million euros. And with that in place, of course, the rest of the money just came. That was, that. then 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 it was no problem. With a couple of weeks, we had our uh, round filled up. Actually, it was more than we had planned for. We had planned for 2.7 million, the uh, 2.5 million euros. We ended up at 2.7 at a valuation of 10 million euros. Uh, and another note is that this was done during the pandemic, so we never got to see these guys, right? They didn't get to meet us. It was so a lot of them said, you know, we 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 have never invested in somebody that we haven't shaken hands with before. So it was it was a strenuous process to 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 put it mildly. Um, so in our pre-seed round, we sold our company as a platform as a service, so a pause company. We weren't sure we would be able to get the whole production of VR simulators automated and no code. So the plan was to create a platform that will allow IT consultancies to scale their VR business. So they have the same problem as everybody else in this world right now. There is that you, you can't get the kind of talent that we have, right? Because Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Google, they're all vacuuming the whole market for anybody who knows anything about game code AR and VR. So uh, if, if B2B should have any chance of this, we figured, okay, there needs to be a tool that makes it quick and inexpensive. And we need a tool that is so easy that the, the IT consultancies don't need to have experts in place. Uh, on a note, uh, uh, both Soprasteria and Bouvet are using our, our software. But as 2021 went on, we realized that we could automate the whole process. Our co-founder and CDO figure out the toughest part no code activation and interaction of objects and characters. So basically what makes a game a game, right? One thing is that you can convert in, let's say a, 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 an engine, right? Uh, another thing is that you can take that engine apart and you can take it apart in a sequence and you can learn how you're doing it while you're doing it. And you can do that as a team. So uh, I, I was at uh, uh, Bifrost a couple of weeks ago in San Francisco, the one put a, on the Nordic Innovation House puts on down there and uh, uh, Volvo cars came over to me and I said, so what exactly is this Cloudberry? So luckily I had my, of course, my laptop with me. So I popped that up and just opened up the software, showed them, imported an engine and took it apart 
And they said, that's what we need to see. And they set up a meeting with the board and now Volvo Cars is using our software. So it's that thing of not just visualizing something and make it look pretty, but actually have it completely gameable. Um, so so uh, um, uh, with that, we are now, uh, um, so and then also our, our uh, uh, UI UX team did a fantastic job of making our software easy to use. Uh, the whole team came then to realize that Cloudberry could be to the game engines, Unity and Unreal, what Canva is to Adobe. So just a really, really quick, easy, simple, SaaS, inexpensive product that does exactly what people want quickly and inexpensively. Uh, so so any, anybody can use this software and build whatever they want in the metaverse or build their own metaverse. We launched in February 2022 as a cloud-based SaaS company, as I said. The early release launch was successful. It was almost bug-free. Nothing on this planet is, of course, bug-free. Um, we now have a shoestring marketing budget because we are starting our seed round now, so we are uh, we don't have that much to spend. But we are launched a purely digital marketing campaign focusing on North America, and we're getting new customers in every day. So the campaign and the messaging and the software is working. People are signing up. Um, so so um, uh, and we're of course with the focus on North America. We are we are now start open an office in in uh, Austin, Texas, and we're hiring people in there uh, uh, to can you continue our growth. Uh, now we're working with Norwegian and US based VCs to close our seed round uh, targeting six million dollars by the end of this quarter. Um, this round is for growth and scaling. Um, and as a last note, uh, uh, which is very, very important uh, and very nice for us, is that our first angel investor has been partaking every single round and is still partaking now as we are going into our, our seed round. So, so, and he's now, <laughs> he's now, he's still the largest investor in the company. So, so that's really good to see that, that you have that history with people and they, you build that trust, you deliver on what you're telling them and it's their money and they decide, okay, we're going to put more of my money into you guys. So, so that's of course the, the ultimate trust over time is that, is that the investors keep on coming back. That was yeah. it. Thank you. Excellent. Wow. Very good. Awesome. Amazing to hear about uh, your funding journey here and the uh, ups and downs and and the way and uh, uh, amazing progress. So since we still got just two minutes more before your time was up, we can take some questions from the audience. I see that Herman. Okay. Yeah, exactly. His, we have two questions. You have a question for uh, Arve. Uh, or perhaps it's an old hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hand's been there for a while, but <laughs> otherwise we have a question from the chat. Yeah. Um, anyone else got a question for Arve? Okay. Okay. Uh, I can I can read the question from the chat. Okay. Um, yeah. It's from Tron, and it says, "Is there such a thing like thing as mil mil spec? Sorry if I'm mispronouncing this. Mil spec XR." What sets it apart from SAC and Co specs? I didn't get that question. <laughs> it's yeah, it's in the it's in the chat. Is the by Tron? It's uh, Mil Spec XR. Uh, yeah. Is there such a thing as Mil Specs XR, and what sets it apart from Zuck and Co specs? Did I don't you get know. Oh, do, do you want to <laughs> clarify, uh, Tron? Johannesson? Yeah, good morning. I, I, I was just uh, listening in on the first part of the presentation when uh, he said that he got contract with the Norwegian Armed Forces. And of course, uh, you know, the requirements from uh, armed forces often, you know, requires high security and uh, perhaps uh, some uh, specs that uh, we don't normally hear about and don't see on the, on the flashy surface when we use uh, tools and so forth. And uh, what we're doing uh, in the company I'm leading is that we build infrastructure and I always wonder who are the most uh, demanding users for infrastructure in this place um, coming up. And uh, uh, well, I can I can answer uh, um, from our perspective. So uh, we have delivered our beta uh, to the armed forces, uh, but we are not infrastructure company so that they haven't solved their cloud rules yet and how they're going to deal with the cloud. So what we delivered as a beta is a standalone product that is locked up in a computer and they deal with all their own security. We're not, 
we don't touch we don't touch security. That's not our expertise. So, so uh, um, if that answers your question, we are purely game coders. All right, great. Thanks, All right. guys. Uh, we need to move on. Uh, uh, if you have uh, more questions, put, please put them in the chat, and uh, Arve can ask them there. And that's for everybody here. Add your uh, LinkedIn profiles and your questions in the chat, and have the discussions there. So yes, let's move on. Sure. Uh, next speaker uh, is coming from a cluster uh, that works with VR, AR, and XR based in Hamar uh, in uh, Norway. Actually, I think the speaker is based in Bergen, but you commute to Hamar. <laughs> So That's welcome. correct. <laughs> Thank you so much, and it was so great uh, mingling with a lot of you um, uh, this morning. Uh, a lot of great people here, and it's it's uh, it's nice to see that this is such an international event. Um, so I've, I'm probably doing this not you know the right way. I've I created a small PowerPoint instead of just talking from the camera, uh, but I I hope that's okay. I hope that's fine. Uh, yeah, so my name is, is Keith Mellingen. I am the cluster manager in a cluster called RIN. We focus on XR technology. I will talk more about that later. Uh, I used to work as a VIR director in a couple uh, companies. I'm also the founder of Virtual Reality Norway uh, Facebook group with, with most of the people working with VR and AR Norway and also the founder of VR and Drinks and a Discord group. And I'm also an admin in an NFT group. So I'm also very interested in, in crypto. So it was great meeting, uh, talking to you. Uh, Right. So I'm just going to go very quickly. I mean, we're, we're now in a new space where we're going over to the metaverse and there's a lot of talk about Web3 and metaverse and what that is. Uh, Web101 is like, you know, uh, statics pages. Web20 is what we have right now, which is more dynamic with, you know, social media and Facebook. And Web3 is more of, uh, you know, more of that and more like with uh, VR worlds and, and it's just more technology put together and metaverse is not really written in st stone right now. I mean, if you ask a lot of people, they have always, you know, different ideas as to what the metaverse is. But what I will focus on today is the VR AR aspect of it and also how to build an ecosystem for, for metaverse. And um, when I'm talking about ecosystem, I'm talking about the kind of members we have in RIN. So in VRIN, we have uh, the public sector. Uh, inside the public sector, we have the hospitals, we have the municipalities, and we have academia. On the private sector, we have companies that deliver VR and AR solutions, and we have companies that need VR and AR solutions. But lately, since uh, Zuckerberg has announced you know, the metaverse uh, and what that's all about, a lot of blockchain companies have become uh, more interested in that, crypto companies. So inside our cluster now, we've started including companies like NAMI. Uh, NAMI is a blockchain company based in Norway, but they're, 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 they're pretty big and they're, they're, uh, they're uh, very forward thinking. And uh, together with RIN, we, we did... Uh, create a prototype, but I'll talk more about that later. Uh, the benefit of, of, of using VR companies um, uh, inside RIN connected with blockchain is that inside RIN, we have members like FinReality that have been creating VR AR solutions for the military, and they also deliver to NATO. So they have specific security protocols that they need to follow, uh, as uh, Trun was talking about uh, a bit earlier on. So they've delivered to NATO and the defense minister has visited them uh, before and they have created their own IP and how to create a multiplayer in VR and AR that is secure enough for NATO to use. Uh, we also have companies like uh, Vixel. Uh, they work with importing uh, BIM models uh, in VR where you can collaborate and uh, then easily find errors in architectural uh, drawings. So there's a lot of, of, of uh, skills and that has been going on for a couple of years, uh, but the metaverse and blockchain is kind of new. This is another company called Holocap where they've um, created a way to scan uh, people. So instead of a 3D model that you have to rig in 3D model, uh, you use depth cameras to then capture the person. And this is a very fast way to record someone and put them into uh, either a VR world or an AR world. <laughs> so, so Nami, they uh, they reached out uh, to us saying, "Hey, you know, we'd like to to go into the metaverse, focus more on VR." And um, they were going to a conference called E E H H. I'm sorry, F Denver, uh, which is a big uh, crypto conference, and they wanted to show the capabilities of their 
uh, platform on how can you build uh, something in VR on top of their platform. Um, so they had only like 10 days before they had to the, go to the conference. So it was a very short deadline. He, uh, Jacobo called me up and said, hey, we, we got to make a prototype. I said, you know, no problem. We have some good members within our clusters. I started bringing some of our members and together they created a prototype where you're able to create art in VR and able to mint it on the fly, meaning that you can create art and sell it within a virtual reality space. And together with with uh, with Nami, they've created a, an, an incubator um, where they're going to focus on 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 uh, gamified uh, experiences, VR experiences uh, that they're going to fund. So that was that was me. So so connecting diverse companies that work with healthcare, military within VR, and companies that work with blockchain. Uh, it really gives value to to both, I would say, both industries. All right. Thank you, Keith. A great uh, presentation. Uh, may I ask you a question? Or actually a, sure. a two-fold question. Sure. Uh, very wide and perhaps not easy to answer. But if you look at the metaverse, um, what would you say is the greatest opportunities and, yeah. and the threats with the metaverse? So let's start with the fun part, the opportunities. Where, where would you identify the, the greatest opportunities right now? Well, I would say the opportunities is actually the amount of new jobs that are coming in. Um, you, you, you have, you can work from anywhere in the world and and join in into the metaverse and also just the crypto NFT space, right? There's new kind of jobs like you know who can manage a, a Discord server, a marketing within Discord, uh, who can build. Um, uh, this 3D house that's going to be in this metaverse. So suddenly, I would say, uh, at least on on the artistic, you know, 3D media people have have got a new opportunity to make money and are more valued now because digital assets have suddenly become uh, as valuable as physical assets. And uh, this is quite new within the consumer. Uh, I mean, it's B two B. It's it's been normal to you know to hire animators, three D artists, whatever to do something. But it's not so normal for consumers to order these kind of uh, uh, these kind of um, jobs. So I've noticed that this has been uh, a big opportunity. And of of course, you know, multiplayer uh, doing tasks together without necessarily being physically in the same place. All right, thanks. Uh, looking at the flip side of the coin, uh, will there be any, you know, challenges uh, to the metaverse? I mean, I'm, I'm reading about the NFTs, you know, when they uh, tried to sell the first tweet, for example, for $27 million or whatever it was. Now it dropped down to a couple of hundred dollars. So it's very volatile. It's not stable, right? So it's, would you say that's a challenge right now? Um, I would say, I mean, the, the NFT space is moving a lot. Uh, it's uh, in the beginning, you know, everyone was like, uh, oh, you know, I can sell this, that you could buy one NFT and you could make money out of it. But now it seems like um, uh, consumers are more looking up to teams and utilities of an NFT. So uh, uh, like an art NFT isn't necessarily good enough anymore. It has to do something. Um, so it's just it's just that the, the, the base of people are maturing and uh, are trying to find more value in what they've they've bought. So it's not necessarily a threat, it's just an, uh, an, invo uh, an involvement. And I would say it's actually positive because it, it kind of educates the masses into how to invest into teams and companies. So it's, it's a huge opportunity. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Keith. Thank you. Yeah. And, and now from Norway uh, to the Swedish side, uh, and uh, we're very happy to welcome you, Patrick uh, Strandfast here from the Great Hi. Journey in Karlstad. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. I'm fine. Um, so, yeah, so, it's it's yeah, it's a lovely day in Värmland. <laughs> yeah, gaming is of course a very important part of the VR uh, field. Uh, so uh, Patrick will talk a bit about VR and gaming at the current uh, level. And uh, yeah, let's hear what you have to say. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I will also do a little presentation. So let's see here. Yes, all righty. So Patrick Stanfost, I'm the co-founder and the director of The Great Journey, which is a, a game dev 
community in Vermont. We uh, gather everyone who's interested interested in game development uh, and it not only VR it's it's any aspects of, of digital games really we've been going since 2016 um, I would like to start it, 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 with a Swedish perspective uh, sorry I, I didn't check Did, can you see my presentation yes yes oh, thank you well, uh, the Swedish perspective. Swedish is Sweden is a sort of engineering company uh, country, and uh, steel has all obviously been very important in in the the uh, development of the Swedish economy and uh, and as a nation. So today we have creativity, which is the new steel, um, and we have uh, to give a little background to what gaming is. We see um, both locally in Vermont, but of course nationally we have lots of fantastic games coming out, um, and that's that's something that we need to to we need to fill the technology with something, of course, and the creativity is the answer to that. Um, the global market, the games market, is uh, 180.3 billion US dollars in 2021 and there's a very strong growth and we expect to have 200 billion dollars in 2023. Uh, Asia is 50 percent of that uh, followed by North America 24 percent and Europe 18 roughly so um, we're in, in in Europe here so so um, it could be interesting to see the the uh, gamers in Europe 50 percent are of the gamers in Europe are six between six and 64 years average age is 32 years half of them are female 40 47 percent are female and if you look at mobile platforms it's 53 percent of gamers are female um, 2.8 billion players globally so there's there's a and growing so there's there's a lot of uh, interested people there. Um, if you look at Sweden, then uh, you would have. Um, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, not Sweden. The, what, how big is the gaming sector? If you would, if you'd compare it to other other um, industries, you've got music, which is like twenty five billion dollars. Uh, Forty four billion is film. So game so is one hundred and eighty billion dollars so it's it's actually bigger than film and music together by large by quite a bit and the Swedish export of games is 35 billion Swedish kroners um, as you all know metaverse it's early days but we see lots of investments going on it's growing um, everyone's trying to define what it is and 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 developing it so so that's really interesting what we see also is uh, lots of merger and acquisitions going on as big tech wants or needs to buy know-how and tech and and to 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 keep keep up and that's that trend is going to keep keep going so we lots of investments and lots of merger mergers um what about the games then when it comes to vr beat saber is is the biggest game uh, most sold uh, 70 million in revenue for that game um fantastic game you you actually dance to music and you hit things with like like a laser saber uh, very very fun um top games actually this is just to show that there are there's there's there are quite a lot of games um, out there and, and and doing well within vr um still early days you have a game like gorilla tag which is um a solo dev, one person who's developed this game, and yet it has 1.5 million unique players. Um, then you have like Valve, uh, published by Valve, which is Half-Life, Alex, and has sold over 2 million games or copies. So, so it's still, um, there's, there's still, it's a bit of a Klondike still, I would say. Um, we have some games in, in, in Vermont. We've developed different uh, games and simulators for hunting, for um, we've done horror games in VR and, and uh, several others. Uh, these are two examples. One is like you're a monkey and you, you're climbing up in this. Uh, uh, it's a bit of a fantasy game. You imagine being Spider-Man or something like that and throwing yourself around. And then we have a, a arena shooter, VR, 
which is also uh, has a special mechanic with the with the uh, how you use your weapon, which is really interesting as well. Uh, we have um, there's a bit of a of a uh, um, yeah, Vermont Satsa. So that means we we really there's there's sort of a an effort made in Vermont to, to produce more games and and more talent. Uh, and what the great journey is basically what we do is is talent production or talent development. So from August this year, we will have 100 students uh, studying game development. And games are now part of this smart speciali specialization strategy from EU within the region. And we have some really strong partners in re the region, Värmland, Castle Commune, Embracer Group, Future Games, uh, various schools and uh, the university here. So that was that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So just a quick question regarding this last thing. Uh, are you interested in finding collaborations on the Norwegian side? Because uh, there's only two uh, or three hours to Oslo from, from Arvika and Karlstad. Absolutely. I mean, I think uh, Verman ha hasn't got enough talent and people <laughs> to, to, to grow on its own merit. So we, we are, you know, Oslo is a, is a city, it's a major city. So we are very interested in... in, in developing uh, corporations, co collaborations with, with Norway, definitely. Just cool. a quick statement or a question. Uh, Patrick, this was this was amazing. And um, just wanted to note that we have an event in November, uh, which mm. is, is called Nordic VR Forum. And we would love to have uh, more focus on the gaming uh, side of VR. So I, you know, I'd definitely love to chat with you later and see how we could do that. We should hook up, absolutely. Great, excellent. That's perfect match. So, uh, and now we're going to listen to a colleague of Patrick as well, uh, Nikki. Are you with us here today? I saw you on the list. Yeah, um, I'm here. Yeah, great. She will talk I'm, about I'm uh, the current XR technology landscape. Uh, where are we right now? Where Where are we heading? Yeah, so, sure. I'm just gonna uh, ask Patrick to turn off his prison or is sharing his oh, screen. Oh, sorry, sorry. There it is. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nikki. Hi, uh, so I'm Nikki and I'm working with Patrick Stanfoss. I'm the community manager at The Great Journey. And um, I, I guess that some of you have tried VR and know the technology well, but there are also some people here that maybe never tried it and haven't heard so much about it. Uh, so, and it's hard to know the experience because you just see someone with a headset and just waving their arms and they can look really silly. Um, but I would say that with f uh, Facebook uh, rebranding themselves and also want to invest more in VR, people have started to gain interest in the VR technology. And the metaverse concept is... Um, I would argue is not a product, it's an idea that you can make products around. And the concept metaverse was first mentioned in a sci-fi novel 30 years ago, and it's about creating an alter ego in an alternative world. And Facebook wants to commercialize this idea uh, by building an industry that can that enables people to purchase, for example, branded clothes in for their avatar. So it's a powerful uh, visualization tool, and it's not only used in gaming, it's used in many different industries as well, like Volvo, the car company used, made their wheel loader digital, so their engineers could look at it by putting up on the VR headset and like walking around this vehicle and look at it from different angles. Um, but I would argue that the game industry is one of the industries that is pushing the VR technology forward and evolving it in, especially in certain domains. And I would say that's, for example, when it comes to human expression. So in uh, VR technology, we have for games, for example, it's latest things are about body tracking and hand control technology. And, and these technical solutions uh, enables people to have facial expressions because like face tracking is, is like the headset is looking at your face and if you smile, your avatar will smile as well. 
And eye tracking is how it follows your eyes and knows what you're looking at. And hand tracking, uh, there are hand controllers where you can like push buttons and it knows where you are in the space, but there are new headsets that will scan your hands so you won't need any hand controllers. You can just move them freely and the uh, headset will digitalize your hands. And then we have body tracking and uh, the, the everyday household doesn't own a bodysuit. It's more common to have uh, controllers like a controller at your hip and one at each foot and then one in each hand. And by having a camera uh, in your room, um, having a camera in every corner will enable you to be fully covered so you could be fully digitalized and you can move and express yourself in a in a more clear way. Um, so by having tech companies investing in the VR technology, the hardware is bound to become lighter, um, uh, smaller, cheaper, and people will be able to socialize through this uh, technology and also having solutions such as even if you're living a 30, uh, 30 square living room, you can have a cinematic experience by putting out on a headset and have like a cinematic screen in your li little space. And it's possible for people to hang out uh, all over on uh, in the world. Um, distance isn't a problem. The time zones still are. Um, but I would say that uh, VR has the potential to be as big as the TV or the phone. And it will be used for many different things but it's hard to say how or what that will be. But it's interesting and uh, exciting to follow this technology as it evolves. That was it. Thank you. You can add me on LinkedIn if, if you want. You. I would love to connect. You, Bye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And uh, it will be so exciting to, uh, to follow um, uh, where this all goes with all the big tech companies investing all these billion dollars a yearly in this uh, development. It will go fast. Uh, yeah, so thank you, Nick. Next speaker. Right, uh, it's actually the last speak uh, before we move on to, uh, to the pitching sessions. Um, and today we have uh, Business Angels Norway uh, with us, uh, Rita and Jörn. I'm not quite sure if both of you are going to talk or only one, but yeah. what we're going to talk about today is uh, one of the first AR cases that uh, you guys invested in from an investor perspective. Uh, and the same company will also pitch later, so you will see it from the start perspective as well. So welcome. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Rita here, Business Angels Norway. So I will I will make a super short introduction about what is Business Angels Norway, and then I will give the word to, to my colleague Jorn. So Business Angels Norway, are, as uh, some of you know already, we are the umbrella organization of Business Angels local and regional uh, business angels. Also, we are uh, working towards Sweden, so we have a lot in common uh, with digital ventures in this moment. And the case that uh, Jorn is going to introduce today basically yeah. came up uh, from one of our training courses because Business Angels Norway, what, uh, what we are doing is providing training for getting new angels into the landscape. So yeah. Picto Detail uh, was one of the winners of uh, Nordic Angel program that was one of the European uh, training uh, programs that we have done with Business Angels Norway last year. And Jan, Jan, can you yes. hear me? Yes. 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 No? Good. Oh. It's always interesting. Uh, so yes, as you said, uh, Rita, thank you. So Jan, heading Business Angels Norway, um, also a direct angel in 86 cases. Uh, early stage investing is fun. That's the short message for a setting like this. And Metaverse is even more fun, right? So yes, Business Angels Norway, you said a little bit about it. 800 Angels, regional umbrella organization, essentially, helping create angel uh, associations on three or four continents at the moment. So that's fun. Now, what happens with when one angel case comes to us? Well, uh, the, we have a little committee that looks through the cases. We get one or two cases every single week uh, coming in, and we choose the best ones. The best ones we will then present to our angel investor network, for example, on our Crowdworks platform. Uh, uh, for now, it's free to be a member, so you're all invited to be get in touch and 
be members, of course. Uh, we're an interest organization. So we present it to our members on Crowdworks. We use it in our training online or offline free angel training sessions around Norway or abroad uh, as cases to invest in. And we present these cases in various angel settings. Uh, you know, like we have an angel setting today at six o'clock in as a garden party, and some of our angel cases come there and are promoted. Now, uh, one real case is then, then uh, as you said, Rita, Picture Tale. Uh, they came to us through a training course. They were uh, had you know years of background in the augmented reality space since you know 2000 early early. They were a very early player in the in the mobile industry, and. Um, I invested as a business angel, as you know, the several around uh, in the business angel thing invested very early on, and uh, and they were then one of the winners of one of the angel training programs voted by the angel group. And what when we now look back at it, out of the hundred plus angel or investors in the company, around fifty or sixty have come through Business Angels Norway. Now, in my head, that's a success on two levels. It means that. You know, an interest organization like Business Angels Norway actually works. We spread the word about cool cases and angels are investing. And, you know, that's fantastic. It's not for us to decide how much is investing. And this company has a philosophy of we welcome small investments. Now, it is also a proof that not only of the interest of uh, that an interest organization works and angels are appreciating and investing, but it's also an example that Metaverse is hot. You know, when we got this case four years ago, nobody had heard about Metaverse. <clears throat> As some, one of the earlier presenters said, you know, Mark Zuckerberg pretty much relaunched the term uh, last fall. But, you know, this is the, the this is the publishing system for the Metaverse, according to Intel. So they, they, they know what they're doing and used the word Metaverse before Metaverse was hot. And that helps. Now, so it is, so it is... Um, it's also a cool case, and it's cool to see that very many angels are voting in it. L like me, I, I invested some money there even, even uh, last month. So that's that's but that's a different besides the point. Anyway, that's that's enough for what Business Angels is and does, and how it interacts with uh, metaverse cases. Um, maybe the hottest thing out there. I usually say that metaverse is the new green, right? <laughs> Metaverse is the greenest thing around because you can interact real world, digital world in whole new ways that are saving so many tons of CO2 that you never will be able to count it. So Metaverse New Green, that's my little perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Jörn. Fantastic thank you. angle thank you. on, yeah, the, on yeah. the New Green. I like that. Yeah, really. Uh, and thank you all the speakers uh, because we just concluded the speaker session mm -hmm. um, and we're going to move on to the pitching sessions. We have four companies with us today, startups and scale-ups, mostly scale-ups uh, from three different countries, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. Um, and they're all going to pitch for four minutes. Um, and then we let one minute open for Q&As. And it's open to all of you. So just raise your hand uh, in the uh, Teams uh, app uh, in case you have any questions for them, and we will, we will let you in. Otherwise, I will come up with some nasty questions, I think. So now we're going to start with the first company. It's a scale up from Reykjavik uh, in Iceland. Uh, and it's Tristan Gribbin from Flow. Welcome, Tristan. You got your four minutes. Welcome. <laughs> and you are on mute. Yeah. You have to unmute. You have to unmute. <laughs> Still muted. OK. Here we yeah, go. I am here. I was just uh, having a little technical difficulty to get my pitch deck up, but I'll just maybe just uh, speak. And, and as I'm speaking, I'm going to, um, yeah, sorry, work on getting my deck to work. Um, okay. So, Flow is an immersive meditation technology platform for modern life. And meditation is one of the most important things we can do to boost mental health. So, with rising rates of anxiety, depression, and burnout, the mental health epidemic is costing corporations over a trillion dollars annually, according to the World Health Organization. And meditation is a proven solution for mental wellness. And the company believes that if pilots, engineers, and surgeons can practice how to perform better outcomes in virtual reality, Flow can teach modern working people like you and me how to master meditation through immersive tools. Um, 
Okay, so there is now a greater demand for the mental support that flows provides um, the global well-being. Am I able to share this? Anyway, I'm not sure if I'm able to um, share this deck, but anyway, there. Um, the okay, I'm just hoping to be able to. Yes, we got it. Yes, we got it. I got it. Hey, it's working. Okay. Okay. Do you see the deck now? No. Okay. okay. Anyway, I'll just have to just speak. I think that's just <laughs> the way it is. So we can just imagine um, the virtual reality is, is all about imagination. So um, the global well-being market is estimated at more than 1.5 trillion. But I'm just gonna, you know, we know that the market is 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 just is is hot, and that digital health is one of the fastest growing markets in the world, including a booming corporate wellness sector where flow is targeted. So. Flow provides a unique platform that allows, allows you to experience meditation in virtual, virtual reality, web and mobile, merging, merging ancient techniques with modern science. And you can be teleported to your personal retreat within the 360 degree nature, um, whenever, wherever on the go with your eyes open. And at the core of our product is our propriety method, the six modes of flow, breathe, move, let go, calm, focus, and restore. And we have over 300 unique sessions under 10 minutes that are available using our um, session builder. So our, our product uh, features highly effective guidance, curated licensed music surrounding nature sounds and video to make the experiences more immersive. So we have um, new guided meditation content available monthly, try our latest release called Preparing for Sleep. And we have proven, Flow has proven to appeal to HR managers and executives who want to boost mental health in their work culture in a meaningful way. Our go-to-market strategy um, focuses on working with strategic partners and global well, uh, health and wellness platforms that serve millions of customers and reseller platforms like telecom companies and VR content distributors. And, um, and our first uh, focus has always been from the beginning at Flow at Work, corporate wellness programs for a wide range of customers from IT and banking to telecom and energy. Uh, Flow at Work programs have been market tested among over 50 leading corporations in Iceland and the Nordics, including Vodafone, PwC, and Psychic Health. And our, um, our sales team has developed a robust pipeline with qualified leads representing over 350,000 um, in potential annual recurring revenue over the next um, couple of years, no, over the next year and a half, sorry. And Flow is now available on a wide variety of platforms. So uh, my slide shows you we are on Viveport, we're on um, SideQuest, we're on, uh, we're on the App Lab, we are on Google Store, Play Store, Huawei Store, uh, we are on a wide variety of platforms. And we are rolling out eight new languages um, in Q3 2022 in cooperation with one of our new strategic partners. This is really exciting. We earn monthly recurring revenue through contracts that are based on licensing and subscriptions. And um, we have a dedicated team of award-winning filmmakers, technology experts, and leading meditation voices. And we have onboarded global wellness influencers from and advisors from across the world. It, so, um, you know, um, I want to acknowledge Catapult right here, right now, because we were in Catapult program 2018. Uh, we've been in digital well now um, since last year, and um, we are fundraising. So, um, talk to us. <laughs> I guess that's my pitch without the slides. Thank you so much. So. I think that was great. Uh, your your deck didn't work uh, and still you managed it. And I think that uh, that's really much what it is, right? Uh, to be an entrepreneur, things yeah. happen uh, and you yeah. need to deal with it and uh, use it well. <laughs> so, so thank you very much. And uh, we, we really want you to re recommend you to try out uh, Flow because it's, uh, it's a, yeah, you have to experience to understand it. So please yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah just search Flow Meditation on SideQuest, App Lab, in the App Lab or, you know, it, yeah. Google I don't play. see any raised hands here, so I'll ask you a question instead. Uh, I happen to know uh, Flow quite well since uh, we've been working with you guys now for about a year uh, in Digital Well Ventures Accelerated Program. Uh, but I think one thing that you 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 perhaps want to explain is uh, if, if you profile an ideal client, because obviously you're doing a business to business uh, uh, case, right? Uh, and you're going for the corporates. So I know that you just closed the deal with PVC. Can you just tell us a story? How, how would the company like PVC use Flow? 
Thank you for that question. So PwC, I would say, is one of our most enthusiastic clients. Their HR manager is um, into meditation herself. And so she really wanted to bring meditation to the workplace in a meaningful way. So she was very on board. And they even had created a wellness committee within PwC. So I had a whole team of people that wanted to bring uh, mental wellness to the whole entire corporation. So we did a 30 day challenge. So they have a subscription plan that goes year by year. But we, once a year, we do a 30 day challenge where every single person in the organization is involved in a in a, a meditation challenge competing for minutes in meditation. So they were able to engage every single across the country um, teams and and then they were competing and and, and they actually were, they had to do the meditation either on their coffee break or their lunch break because it wasn't during billable hours, but they managed to rack up, um, and this is Iceland, so it's a smaller country, but they, they racked up 5,000 minutes of meditation. And they, we did an independent study on the 30 day challenge and they, they we had um, uh, proven to, to boost well being and that, that people really were engaged with the VR, also the web and the mobile. And we, we, get, we learned a lot of data points um, through this. 30-day challenge, which is wonderful. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tristan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. So now we're going to the north of uh, Sweden uh, to meet a startup and scale up called Curist. Uh, Emil uh, Lilja, uh, you're working with digital rehabilitation in uh, VR. Uh, welcome to the show, so to speak. <laughs> How are you? We see your presentation, but we can't hear. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. yes perfect. So. Thank you for that uh, introduction. I'm I'm doing well up in the north. <laughs> How are you doing in Karlstad? Very well. well. Great. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, can you see the presentation? Because I can't get any indicators that it's actually working. It's working well. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, uh, my name is Emil, and I'm the one of the partners and the CEO at uh, a Swedish med tech startup called Curist. And we're using virtual reality in order to make uh, physiotherapy great again, more or less. And uh, I'm going to start by telling you a quick story uh, about a woman I met uh, last week. Uh, she's uh, 37. She has three kids. They're uh, age uh, 10, 12 and 14. And one day, 10 years ago, when she was riding her bicycle to work, she got hit by a car and suffered a whiplash injury. Uh, she was hospitalized and she started doing physical therapy, but it didn't work. And she hasn't been working for the past nine years. And the reason for that is, uh, you know how, how the drill goes. You go and see your physiotherapist in primary care. You get your piece of paper with exercises that you are supposed to do, uh, but nobody does them to the, the full extent. Uh, and this uh, is due to lack of motivation, to unclear results. And there's also a big uh, issue when the physiotherapists don't know which exercises you're actually doing what, and what is the, the, the result of them. Uh, have I given you the, the proper rehabilitation program? And uh, the latest research shows that 80% of people stop doing their exercises within two weeks, and this leads to huge economic burden on society. Uh, the cost of whiplash in Sweden is 4.2 billion each year. Uh, and in the US, it's $135 billion each year. And this is mainly because we don't have enough, enough physiotherapists. People are doing more treatment than they, they need more treatment uh, meetings than they should have. And it's mainly due to uh, lack of rehabilitation at home. So we started developing uh, a solution for this using VR. And it's pretty simple. If you have a disorder which we can treat, then you as a patient put on the VR headsets and all the exercises and rehab program are highlighted and illustrated in a very uh, easy way. It's basically if you're doing it correct, it turns green. If you're doing it a little bit wrong, it's yellow. And if you're doing it a lot wrong, it's red. So you get instant feedback and cont can continuously improve and make sure that you're doing the exercises in the correct way. But the really exciting thing about this is because everything is digital, we can measure all the movements. Uh, we can measure if you're shaking in certain positions and where your range of motion is lacking. So as you are rehabilitating, we are sending back training results to the physiotherapist to assess and evaluate if the, the rehab program is actually having the desired effect. 
and we can check up on you and alter the program uh, whenever, wherever you are, more or less. Uh, we started doing this. Uh, about, uh, we lost your screen sharing here, uh, if you're still showing okay. us. Yeah, so please um, uh, share again. Technology is not with us today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you are. Thank yes. you. Please continue. Yeah. Um, we started uh, delivering this to several healthcare providers in Sweden, both in the public and private sector. But what we found out is that we can do it actually most uh, uh, effect going directly to patients. So as of the last month, we are actually a digital healthcare provider within rehab. So if you contact us, we will have one of our physiotherapists to have a first initial chat with you and make sure like, okay, what's your issue? What's the, what's the origin of this issue? What kind of treatments have you had before? And if we believe that we can actually help you, we will send you the VR headset with the training program. So you don't need to own anything by yourself. Uh, and then the training starts. A physiotherapist will follow up on you each week, make sure that you do those exercises as we have agreed upon and making sure that they're having the desired results. And um, once you're done, you send the headset back to us. We want to think about the environment. We want to make everything as, uh, as sustainable as possible. So then we can just, we take it back, we clean it up, and then we can send it to the next patient. Because no two patients are the same. Some requires two weeks of rehabilitation, some require two years. So it's a, it's a really effective way into tailoring the treatment in order to each patient needs. Come on. So what's in it for the customer, uh, both patients and physiotherapists then? Well, this is the first way we can actually connect people in a, in a really efficient uh, and a, in a good way. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in Norway, if you're in Iceland, if you're in Sweden, on your sailboat, in your cottage, in your apartment, you always have your physiotherapist with you and the clinic is open 24 seven. We don't care if you train in the middle of the night or during the middle of the day, we can follow up with you on scheduled meetings once a week. Uh, and what we've seen as well is that this provides a safer rehab process. Like if you take a neck injury, it's pretty scary when things start cracking and you don't know if you're doing it uh, correctly. But when we can illustrate and show exactly how things are done, it feels a lot safer. And what we have seen on our first initial results, we provide a much faster rehab process uh, than the traditional methods. And mainly this is because we actually get people exercising and we get them to do the exercises correctly. Uh, as well, it's fun and motivating. It feels more like you're playing a game than you're doing your tedious exercises from, a, from, from paper. And this is the first time we can actually see which exercises are giving the proper results. Before you had to go to a lab which has like high speed cameras, really expensive equipment. We can do it all the way from, from your couch. Um, for some reason, the Nordic countries are the ones that suffer most from neck injuries in the world. Norway has the highest number of neck injuries per capita in the world, followed by Sweden, Denmark and then Finland. Uh, we don't know why this is. Uh, we are not that crappy at driving cars. We are not that crappy at uh, riding our bicycles, but for some reason that is. Uh, and in the Nordic countries, around one and a half million people are suffering from neck disorders each year. And we did an estimation of the Swedish market and it shows us that 20% of the Swedish market, which is 600,000 people, is worth around 400 million sec annually. Now you're ready to wrap up. Uh, yeah, I just yes. have one final slide. Uh, our go-to-market strategy, we are partnering up with the strategic partners here. Uh, one is uh, a pain association for patients called Personskadeforbundet in Sweden and they have sister organizations in uh, Norway and Denmark as well. So of course we're starting with Sweden, uh, then we're going to Norway because you are in need of serious treatment. And then we follow up with the rest of the Nordic countries. Um, a lot of this is gonna be through digital marketing because we are a digital physiotherapy provider. And uh, the first we've seen on our CAC is that if we spend around 20 euros, we can uh, get around two to three patients, which is, which is around, uh, a thousand euros in in revenue and we are raising capital so please uh, reach out if, if you think this is interesting uh, and i'll send you a link and uh, my email as well in in the in the chat thank you very much
Very well. Very well. Thank you. This is uh, this is a uh, this is a cool example of, of uh, how VR technology goes into uh, other fields than gaming and and so on and into health in this case. Um, amazing opportunities. So, just a, a short answer. Uh, how much are you uh, your funding round currently at? Uh, one and a half million euros. Perfect. Great. Yeah. So, okay. Next up. All right. Uh, yeah. So now we're going to move from the north of Sweden to, how should I say, the middle of Norway. Uh, <laughs> so we're moving down from Oslo to Moss, uh, yeah. where we're going to meet uh, a company that's in the ed tech field. Uh, the uh, entrepreneur is a friend of mine and also co-investor in previous ventures. So we've been doing a yeah. lot of business together. Now he's on his uh, second uh, founder venture called Vitario. So welcome Lars Gunnar Flesberg. Um, yeah, sorry, but uh, I have some uh, technical issues. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear. Yeah. I tried to share the screen and then it uh, just went uh, 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 broke down. But uh, hopefully it will um, will turn up soon. Uh, hi everyone, my name is uh, Lars uh, Fletsberg. Uh, as uh, David said, I'm uh, the CEO and founder of uh, Vitario. We're an uh, EdTech uh, scale-up uh, here in Norway, uh, where we use uh, game mechanics and uh, physical activity to, to increase uh, learning outcome. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it's still freezing, but uh, hopefully now. Now we can see. Yep. Uh, it should be here. All right. Just keep it like that. That will be fine. Yeah, I can do a slideshow. Should be a, shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, so what we do, uh, we we uh, get users that is uh, <coughs> police and the students outdoor in in fresh air at the same time as they learn in an engaging way. So we have uh, developed a game based uh, mobile app that will promote learning through uh, outdoor movement using augmented reality and GPS technology. And uh, the app combines uh, reality with uh, virtual elements to create fun, engaging and active learning experiences uh, for schools and companies. And um, the, the solution consists of two uh, parts, uh, the Vitario app, provides players with a navigation map to locate the task waypoints. Uh, and uh, of course that can be downloaded both on Google Play and App Store. Uh, it's just to enter a game code and start the game. Um, start to walk uh, and, and when you find the first waypoint, learning content will appear and, uh, and you answer question. Uh, move to to the next waypoint, uh, earn points, and compete with other players. Uh, it's, it's just like uh, it's a bit like Open Go, uh, where we've added learning content in addition. Um, and we have uh, six uh, question types uh, on our platform today. In the Vitorium uh, Manager uh, web interface. Uh, the customer can uh, create learning games uh, from scratch or uh, download one of the 600 ready-made uh, learning games we have on the platform right now. So a bit about the market. The, the global game-based learning uh, market is, is growing rapidly. Its uh, annual growth rate is predicted to 27%. And expected to uh, to reach 28.8 billion dollars uh, by 2025. Um, so we launched our app 12 months ago, after two years of uh, R&D, and uh, we're already uh, 850 organizations in six countries using Vitario. Um, of them, 109 are corporates, um, and experts say that uh, 5% conversion rate from trying to pay corporate customers, that's that's good. 
but we managed to to reach 25 percent conversion rates from the large customers as you see here for instance coca-cola Simployer, starts big store uh, large companies here in in in, uh, in norway and uh, we built a quite a good team now with the 12 persons um, and we also have uh, nine between nine to ten developers in uh, working out of Poland. The team uh, are um, uh, have a background from uh, tech companies. Uh, myself and my co-founder Toro Hendriksen uh, founded the Schooler, uh, a global tech company now with uh, with uh, customers in over 100 co uh, countries just been sold uh, this company um, and then our last uh, the last slide is uh, we're planning to uh, to do a series a round in the q4 of this year uh, so i'm a bit early uh, out now um, why uh, you should uh, consider to invest is because yeah it's an innovative solution in a very large market with strong growth and uh, we have a uh, well-functioning product. Customers are signing up. It's going viral now. Uh, uh, every day between uh, five and ten new schools are signing up on the platform. We have documented willingness to pay from both customers and investors, having raised uh, 20 million NOC now in our seed round uh, Q, uh, in Q4 2021. Um, and we have founders, um, myself and Tulove, who have succeeded in learning technology in the past. And of course, we're doing something useful for uh, for society by supporting United Nations Development Goal Number One, Quality Education. We've also been noticed uh, by uh, a magazine called Education in uh, Technology Inside, uh, who. Uh, uh, named up us at, as uh, one of the top 10 uh, edtech startups in Europe in 2021. And we're going to use the funds primarily for R&D, 52% uh, uh, and the remaining uh, GNA marketing and, and sales. So that's uh, all for me. Thank you very much for, for listening. Thank you, Lars Gunnar. Um, Awesome. I think it's great to see the the level of speed and the rapid speed you developed the, the venture from. Uh, I remember I was one of the first angels uh, in Vitario, uh, even before it was called Vitario, right? Uh, and I did an exit now, I think, two years ago on the 10x, so uh, which I was happy for then. Uh, I should have been cool, right? Because today I would have made much more than that. <laughs> yeah, you should you should uh, should have been uh, been been. Uh... Been, uh, be, been in the company now, but because it's, it's booming business and it's really fun to see, uh, to see the uptake from the customers. It's, it's What's really the valuation fun. today, uh, Lars Gunnar? What uh, valuation? Yes. Uh, we haven't decided yet. Uh, it's a board decision, so uh, I'll have to come back to that. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. So uh, we're going to stay in Norway uh, and we're going to move on to the last pitch for today. Uh, and I think it's quite interesting, actually, because Business Angel Norway just uh, discussed this case in why they choose to invest in picture retail in such an early stage. Uh, and now we're going to hear it from the founder himself, uh, who is a serial entrepreneur as well, uh, Håkon Gunnarsson. Welcome to us. Um, thank you. I'm actually going to leave the floor to our uh, CFO, Gershke Ataman, but I'm very happy to be here. So um, with this short period of time, I'll just leave the floor to him, but I'm listening in. Perfect. Uh, hi, my name is Gershke Ataman. I'm the CFO of Picture Tale. Uh, great event, and thank you for having us. Um, so I will uh, tell you about our AR uh, metaverse. So we believe in augmented reality and enhancing the real world. Uh, we created a, a publishing uh, system uh, for uh, any digital content that can be placed anywhere uh, in the world. Uh, so we think this is a new arena for, for storytelling and experiencing location-based content. We have two main use cases uh, within our platform. One of them, what we call GeoPlus. 
enables qualified content partners to publish any kind of uh, digital asset through uh, our web admin panel anywhere in the world. So we kind of a delivery mechanism, any kind of a pipe empowering them, and then users can access any type of uh, AR content through one platform, through through one app. So that's kind of the, the premise of our uh, platform. Uh, and the, the second use case we focus on is what we call uh, Camera Plus. So with Camera Plus, it is it is not about the location, so you can wear either AR glasses or, or mobile phone. Uh, you can let the, the AR content come to you either in your living room or in your garden. Uh, and we have been uh, partnering with uh, some of the, the, the content partners in Norway, uh, such as Kaltiva, the largest cultural institution, cultural fund, or Kilden in Kristiansand, um, the Performing Arts Center. They are interested in, for instance, delivering live performances through our platform to, to their uh, users. So, um, what sets us apart really from 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 others in, in AR and it from other other platforms? One, we focus on real people, you as as the AR content, and not not uh, you know only 3D 3D characters, avatars, or 3D models. Uh, and think about a case where a content partner can use a fifty dollar green screen. They can record themselves with their smartphone and publish that content anywhere that matters. And uh, the VR, our beta version of our, our platform uh, has been released and it's available in the, the app stores. And we have done comprehensive pilots uh, with our also uh, infrastructure partners, including uh, Telenor Group. Uh, and uh, both we had uh, the pilots both in Norway and then outside of Norway, we did a research project, the innovation, uh, we had received innovation grant uh, with uh, in cooperation with Telenor and also Intel. Uh, where actually we are using their edge computing technology to also uh, create a hyper local uh, AR experiences uh, together. Uh, and uh, one other kind of key key thing about our platform, we, we filed two patents. So this is really a, you know a deep uh, technology also development project. One of them is immersive ad experiences. Think about typical kind of ad displayed to you on a mobile phone, right? You see either full screen, right? That disrupts the whole experience or small banners in the bottom. Forget about all that. What we can deliver is ads immersed into the real world in the background while you are watching an AR content. So uh, we have filed patent on this one. And another one is actually multi multi user uh, experiences. So um, so we're de developing really a technology on these uh, fronts. Uh, and um, uh, we, we, with that said, um, uh, as I said, uh, it, our, our business model is about letting users uh, consume any type of content through one-stop shop platform. Uh, they can either enjoy it free of charge, in which case we monetize through uh, immersive ads, or they can pay for, for such content, and then we do kind of revenue share with our uh, content partner. So that's that's the premise. And uh, the, you know, these the, uh, the couple of billion dollars have been already uh, spent on uh, uh, AR based ads through, through various platforms and social media. Uh, and um, also uh, users have been spending uh, you know, the, the one to two billion dollars uh, on uh, the, you know downloading and uh, on, on microtransactions on, on AR uh, content. So uh, with that said, I'll be I'll be happy to answer uh, any questions uh, you may have. Thank you very much for uh, the short and uh, very crisp pitch. Excellent, thank you. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you again, same as to the question I asked Lars Gunnar. Uh, what is the ask here? Uh, how much are you raising? Uh, we, we are we are doing a kind of small uh, bridge round uh, before um, before the kind of commercial release, uh, which we are planning in in six weeks. Uh, I'll say you can you can uh, get in touch with us um, so the, that we can uh, give, give specifics for two interested parties. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and on that note, um, I want to inform you all sitting here today that uh, we will be able to distribute all the pitch decks uh, to the investors. So uh, call out to all the startups, send me the pitch deck so I can distribute it if you want to the investors that participated today, and you will have it as a link. Um, we have now reached the end uh, of IBC. We won't have time for the roundtable, uh, but what we will do is to leave uh, the session open until 10 o'clock, another five minutes. So if you guys want to network, talk to each other, feel free. 
uh, but uh, we are not going to interfere with that discussion. So with that said, yeah. thank you very much for uh, today's IBC 19 and uh, welcome back to IBC 20, which will be in June, yeah. uh, where we're going to talk about agri-tech, completely different subject. And food tech, and it and will be tech. yeah, it will yes. be very exciting. And thank you everybody for giving all uh, this perspective on the on the metaverse and the VR and R technology. Uh, yeah, I'm really even more looking forward to the future now. So definitely, definitely. Being thank close you. to to the audience. Yeah. Well. To, thank you. Thank coming you. up so early. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. All right. So we we'll put ourselves on mute now. Yeah. Huh? So feel free feel to free. mingle. <laughs> Just want to say it's great seeing uh, VRAR companies in Norway being part of the the pitch deck. That's uh, it's great. And uh, I got a message on LinkedIn about my uh, answer on um, about people are now looking at teams when buying NFTs. Uh, so what I meant with that was was that you know instead of buying a piece of art and you know. And that said, they're more looking into what teams are doing with the NFT. Like, what kind of utility is this NFT going to have? What's their roadmap? Um, what can they gain from it? So it's not necessarily just the art anymore, but it has there's a bit more functions that uh, the consumers are looking at. I think it's quite interesting, actually, Tristan. Uh, you guys actually tried uh, to to put meditation on uh, NFTs as well. Uh, do you want to say a few words on that? Your Thank friends? you. Thank you for bringing it up. I liked what Keith said earlier about NFTs. That uh, NFTs they they kind of need to do something. They can't just be a piece of art anymore. And I think we we learned a lot. We posted our first NFTs to on Rarible, uh, dot com and with, working with a Swedish company called Figex. And uh, we had a great collaboration. In fact, we're still we're still working together, but we have put the NFT project on hold for the moment. But because I think that um, it's a very interesting proposition when you make an NFT, not just to be just like a cute something cute, but something that actually benefits people. So I think that that's where we can really um, make an impact with flows. We can put on a, you know a thirty second meditation NFT, boom. <laughs> And uh, we can create a whole series of, of those. That's going to be really fun. And you can resell. I mean, the, uh, the, the I mean that I find very fascinating. What if you have like a, a an NFT a meditation experience where somebody buys it and they're like, "Yeah, this was cool," and then they resell it, and then you get mm -hmm. royalties from it. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> that's that's super cool. We should talk about this. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I have a question to you, Tristan. Uh, do you have uh, any KPIs, measures for the users? How much more well they feel after having such a meditation feeling uh, experience uh, compared to normal? Most of my friends, they like, wow, well, I can't get them into meditation. Exactly. Um, it, it, it seems to be true. I'm a ADHD, so... Maybe we can collaborate uh, with them because we understand it's it's very difficult to get people to meditate. That's why we use the immersive tools because when you have a headset at work and you can take a four minute um, escape and it actually works to help you to train meditation, it, it's a very good combination because a lot of people that have a very difficult time closing their eyes, um, they're willing to go into the VR and, and try it there. And it's because it's so highly effective, it's scientifically proven that when you're surrounded by just pure nature, your mind already becomes calm right there and then you can breathe and focus. So I think that that's why we created these immersive tools is because it's it's very hard to get people to access those benefits. So the, yeah, we have all, we have measured, you know, greater ability to focus, um, just a sense of well-being it increases, having meditation at work, heavy flow, and then also, um, yeah, just a, like, um, a feeling of a flow in the day, more effortless. There's a lot so of could different that, um, benefits. Could I make it as a concept where I have it hanging on my door? As soon as people come in, I say, give them the VR glasses and say, hey, four minutes meditation. I think it would be nice if you down. could have a headset, like your headsets are getting lighter, you could have it in your desk drawer mm -hmm. and it should be something that you do, you know, as a, as a team, I mean, that's the, the great thing that we do as a flow team. Every morning we have a 15 minute slot where we say we hello, then we meditate for eight minutes and then we come back and say, what did you do? And people oh, do different, all different kinds of things. There's different, many different ways you can meditate with flow. You can go on a walk, you can 
you can do some breathing, you can focus, you can uh, have a full body relaxation, as many different things. And then we talk about it and then it changes the mood of the whole day. And it must change the efficiency of the day. As you gravitate towards joy, you will get solutions more simplified and the worries will not be like endless discussion, just like backlog, which is more useful. Exactly. <laughs> both focus, on, mm. focus on what you want to focus on. Prepare Interesting. Let's, let's catch up. Let's do uh, that. Trish, Trishan, could you send the link for Flow VR? I tried finding it on SideQuest, but I couldn't. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Well, if I'm going to put, I'll just put the link right now to the, um, if you go to our main site, which is flow.is, I'm going to post it right now. Uh, you have the bu buttons and links to all the different platforms that we're on. So you can choose to go through SideQuest or you can go through App Lab or you can go through Viveport. Or yeah, there's a lot of different choices. Or you can download the mobile. If you don't have a VR yet, you can have the mobile app. And we have now, it's automatic 30 days free for the mobile app for any platform and then for Play or from App Store. And then you can explore the, th the 360 content in the in the mobile app for 30 days free. Uh, you don't have to put in your credit card or anything like that. So um, yes, yeah, statistical data. Um, hold on, I got a question. Do you also have some statistical data to record to record if the meditation affect the heart beats or blood pressure? Thank you for that question, Jay. Uh, I haven't met you yet, but I want to connect with you on LinkedIn. Uh, Jay, we are that is the the top of of our um, uh, wish list for cl clinical data for flow because we already know from people um, using their um, smartwatches and and measuring themselves using flow that, that it, it, it decreases the, um, the heart rate and um, has a positive effect in that regard. And we also know that we've, we've also seen some measures with the heart rate variability, increasing the heart rate variability. And so that's a very uh, measurable outcome that people can do their own self-testing on right now, but we haven't done a clinical test yet, but I think that's, that's definitely probably the first one we would do. Thank you for that. Oh, Tristan, I have a question for you. Thank you. Yeah, I'd love to hear a question. Uh, yeah, so um, I have been meditating for a long time um, and uh, clearly I've seen a lot of uh, improvement and benefit from it. And I really appreciate uh, the product that you're bringing into this world. But um, going ahead, I think a metaverse is also going to create a sort of a distortion in terms of cognitive dissonance from the reality. Uh, and also, I think uh, the perception of the self, uh, uh, probably spending a lot of time with the alter ego might uh, distort your real feeling of self. And um, do you see an area of, uh, you know, building something to uh, come out of that uh, alter ego and be the true self, which might be entirely different person? Thank you, Preeti. That's a, that's such a good comment because I, I see what you're saying when like if you're being an avatar, if you're being an alter ego, if you're being something else, if you're kind of creating more of an ego structure and meditation is more about going within. That's what meditation classically is through the ages, going inside of yourself and in a sense um, becoming uh, your true self, you know, not being a false self or alter ego, but being who you really are. I think that just my own experience through six years of working on flow and working in this space we've, we've created tools that actually do help you go inside of yourself not be creating you know something so that, so i think that that's why flow is so relevant in the metaverse is because you can people can especially gamers who maybe are getting added stress from being in the metaverse they can then take a take a break and become more connected inside and go back to their lives with a clearer vision and and more in their centered in their in themselves Right. more Thank connected you. in our hearts. Thank you. That's a good, that's a good point. And there's a lot of discussion on this. There's a, there's a leader in uh, VR who has their, own, she's developing her own headset for young people between eight and 18. Her name is Nina Jane Patel. She writes a lot about this topic. So I, I suggest you read up on her blog. She, she writes about the exact topic, Nina Jane Patel. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you. Quick, quick question, Tristan. Uh, uh, Flow VR is not a multiplayer experience, right? This is a single player experience. For not now. yet, <laughs> yeah. but we don't have it in multiplayer in VR yet. But I, I, that is definitely where we will go. People can meditate together um, live. But um, 
and that will that will also be enabled through um, events. And I've tried to run live VR events in Metaverse, but it's been a bit clunky. Like when I was trying to share my slides, it was <laughs> it was a bit like yeah. that. Yeah. Lots of people sign up, and then all of a sudden it's not working. No, but it, it will it will go. It will happen. But what we do as a team is, you know, you can get a lot of people. You can use the flow tools through streaming. Like you can use the web portal, the the web um, the web app. Through the streaming, we could, for example, right now share a, a sixty-second or four-minute meditation, or, or eight-minute meditation. Right now, through the st streaming um, shared experience, which is a very powerful thing to do um, through our web portal. But but it's still a it's still a very good tool without having multiplayer. And I'm I'm thinking, you know, the single-player aspect of it kind of solves the issue. Uh, now I'm so sorry, I don't remember your name, but your was it Patil? Yeah, pretty, I think. Um, pretty, sorry. <laughs> that, you know, because you don't have an avatar in, in single player. I mean, I'm assuming in Flow VR, there's no body. Is there a body there? No, there's no body, right? It's no. just the experience. <laughs> yes, yeah, just your experience. You're just, it's kind of like you disappear into the experience, which is kind of also what you want to do in meditation. You kind of just feel yourself kind of invisible in the world. It's nice. It's a real impact product you, uh, you have created there. So it's it's the way forward when I look about social impact and being becoming whole as a person instead of going into multiverse experience at higher, higher rates are building deformation in, in our world. Uh, so we, we are in really troubled times where there are a lot of uh, hate out there and prestige and egos and, and so on. So to, to to gather that piece, so it's it's really I'm really really impressed uh, to not see it linked to to be even more ego prestige based or uh, in some games where you are attracted to buy some more products, which is we we really need to focus, especially in the north, since we have the overshoot days actually decreased since the pandemic. We are spending spending too much um, and the north is highly visible on the global scene so unless we change our behaviors the world won't be our influences all over the world uh, whether we think about it or not uh, we are so uh, thank you thank you so much for your dedication and passion to, to drive this forward thank you for your words rika that's wonderful to hear and i love that that you see his impact and and that's why we were at catapult you know not slow and that's why we want to help you know millions of people with their mental health and i think you're on a similar track so i can't wait yeah. to learn more about your product i'm so excited <laughs> thank you yeah i i could really say that uh, the same thing it's four years ago since uh, tristan and i met on a hotel in stockholm i was sitting there with a headset and uh, there was a lot of interesting <laughs> Uh, other audience at the hotel. So uh, Tristan got a very big interest at that night as well. So um, since that, I'm I'm used to work with the flow every morning, four to eight minutes as well now. So uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's and in fact, it's a very interesting when uh, I've been working with VR since 1995. Uh, so um, uh, this is actually a way of uh, get focus on, on something, because if you uh, put your headset on, then you are full focused on, on uh, and then it's good to have four to eight minutes. Uh, it's hard to focus a little longer, so it's better to have more short versions of that. Mm -hmm. And meditation is also a way of forgetting, letting go, which exactly. so many people, the older they get, the harder it is. So exactly. I have, a, you know, my parents will still, or my mom will still tell about something happening 30 years ago. Do you know what she said? Oh, let it go, mom. It's coming up again. It's, it's eating your time, it's eating focus for creating the future. If you focus on what happened in the past, however bad it was have to be turned around to find what was good about it what was the gift in this terrible situation what was the gift mm -hmm. so you can come back and use the time you spend of thinking every day 
of actually thinking of a solution for the future instead of why did this happen to me? Poor little me, which is often how we trap ourselves in victim mentality and uh, regardless of our state in life, the, the things we really like to hide. So it's um, incredibly important, uh, I believe, as the, the influential flow we are getting towards us is what has thousand times higher than it was a uh, hundred years ago. The increase immensely since I was a child. I mean, I grew up without a phone. My children are constantly being bombarded with information and me as well, which uh, doesn't necessarily can have neighbors speaking all day about Kavik or Ukraine and uh, not doing anything for the bees or the garden or the work just because of that information flow getting stuck in the head. So thank you. Really cool. I got a question from Sophia Zhang. I mean, okay, maybe I can just, uh, Sophia, we can connect on LinkedIn, but she was just talking about, uh, is the user experience based on psychological profile or needs and essential experience customized for the users? And right now it's personally driven, like you driven, you, you drive your own experience with, according to your need. But uh, I think in the future, we'll have more connection to the biometrics and uh, have more AI involved. Uh, that's a future project. That, that's actually something we, we gain with Scatterfund to develop. Exactly Great. that functionality. So we have much to speak about. We do. <laughs> that's <laughs> Can't wait. Thank you. Yeah, this was great. Uh, if if anyone wants to uh, reach out, you know, feel free to connect on on LinkedIn with me. Um, I can talk about metaverse, VR, AR, and NFT. Unfortunately, I'll have to leave now. But yeah. this was this was really great, and a big thanks to the organizers. I I don't think Stefan is there anymore, but uh, <laughs> this Keith, was this was really good. Keith, are you doing like online events? Are you are you hosting like online events? Because you were always hosting live events, but I'm thinking. Maybe you're hosting yeah. more online events. Uh, yes. I mean, we did have the virtual VR and drinks uh, uh, in VR uh, mm -hmm. while COVID was going on. Right now, we've started doing them physically again. Uh, but within the Vrind cluster, we have um, a meet meetups and we have uh, like a workshop kind of thing. So if you have a need, uh, you know, the members can be. So, uh, uh, Trisha, I'll definitely need to talk with you so that we can see how you will fit in. If you would like to fit in, in, of course, and also there's Nordic VR forum, which is at the end of uh, like close to November, that could be of interest. Uh, cool. From from me, Jörn, Business Angels Norway. I mean, congrats, Stefan, David, everybody. They have you know Investor Breakfast Club 19. Pretty cool. Been there. We've been there since the start as a partner, and it's good to have you back after the pandemic. <laughs> we, we need this, but we want it in real life too, right? Both in Kalsta and here in Oslo. So this is great. They used to be physical. They used to be physical in Oslo. Uh, it, right. was, it was actually, in my eyes, was the primary meeting point for angel and early stage investors in Norway for, you know, pre-pandemic. So the Investor Breakfast Club has, has had a very big role, I'd say. And, you know, these guys have done a fantastic job with us. So uh, we're longing to have Investor Breakfast Club in a, you know, hybrid format, both both physical in Oslo and Karlstad and also digital or something. But uh, I'm sure you guys are going to come, come up with a good solution. Yeah, we, I, do, we will do that, Jörn. No, no doubt. Thank you. From, from my perspective, I think the fact that we early stage investors have a format like this to talk and share experiences and share the hottest, latest news and cases is really, really important because, you know, especially in the early stage investing, it's it's so vital that we, because we all have our own competence set when we are judging cases. So to, to, to discuss and learn about new things together, I think is critically important. And, uh, and that's one of the things that you have really accomplished with Investor Breakfast Club. Thank you, Jan. I see there's a comment from uh, a um, Abhij Abhijit, uh, if the metaverse can be limited on e-commerce platform, uh, they have a business idea. I would say, yeah, that's a possibility, uh, but would probably need to 
to connect you with some people, Abjit. So, but you know, just feel free to to shoot me a, a message. Yeah, comment from me on the same thing. Uh, you know, picture tale that was presented, and, and I'm biased. I have invested even a month ago. Um, but uh, when they came to us they, uh, in Business Engines Norway, they were basically saying, we are the platform for the metaverse. And I said, you know, what? Either that's way too good to be true or it's, but, but um, you know, what is the metaverse? It's essentially the merge between anything digital and anything physical. And of course, in, 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 in three years, we will all know that there's one place to go for that. Just like there's one place for YouTube or videos, there's one place for et cetera, et cetera. And so when you say e-commerce platform and, you know, uh, I, I guess I can tell a story there that, you know, uh, Intel searched 126 so-called AR publishing platforms for a big Barcelona project a couple of years ago. And after 126 cases, they said, no, you're not the true platform. You're not the true platform. Number 127 they found was <clears throat> this company, Picture Retail. And uh, the, the fun thing is that uh, two months later, the, the guy doing all the testing at Intel, who had 40 patents and stuff, he said, he came to Picture Tail and said, this was so good. Do you have any job openings? And he's now the CTO of Picture Tail. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I don't know, promising. <laughs> but, uh, that's, but the point to the question, Abhijit, is that, of course, e-commerce uh, you know, this is a game of platform on platform on platform on platform in my eyes. So it's all a question of which platform is the one you go to for videos? Well, it's YouTube. Which platform is the one you go to for social? Well, Facebook. Now, Facebook wants to go all metaverse. We just don't know what it is yet. Now, what if somebody else is ahead of them or they decide to buy and all of that? But but for sure, I mean, e-commerce is a tiny bit of the new metaverse because, you know, I, I've worked a bit on, I did the workshop for, for Verizon, large US telco, two years ago when they were trying to find out what is the future of the 5G city, as they called it. Uh, I was heading a workshop um, here in Oslo where the whole leadership from Verizon came over on what is the 5G city or what's the metaverse city, as we would say today. And, you know, if you think about what 5G and metaverse can do to smash together anything physical and anything digital, you know, it's a brand new world there in a year or two or three. You know, I, we're not going to be able to recognize Oslo or Karlstad today with the world that happens in two years because everything digital in Karlstad happens to be on your on your glasses all the time. And that's just a very different life experience. So, you know, I, I sometimes say that the metaverse is, well, I, I was at Stanford in 98 for, for a semester, and I met uh, Tim Berner-Lee, the guy who turned on the internet, World Wide Web, right? So if you have a switch, on one day it's on zero, next day Tim switched the switch and he turned on the World Wide Web. And that's how I see the metaverse, you know. Now when it is being turned on tomorrow, the world is just different. How can we even imagine a world without the World Wide Web today? No, we can't. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with, with metaverse. I mean, can we in a year or two imagine living in a world without the metaverse? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. So, you know, kudos again to you guys organizing uh, metaverse, putting on the hottest topics uh, up here. Great job. Are you, are you up for a challenge, John? Hmm? Are you up for a challenge? Of course I am. So you said that in one in about three years, you believe that there will be only one op, one platform a go to for metaverse. No, actually, I didn't say that. I think that we all live in the metaverse in three years. And, and I, oh, I okay. sincerely hope it's not one platform. I don't believe yeah. in monopolies. I really mm -hmm. hope not. But I see that that's very often the logic in a digital world. Unfortunately, I hope it will be 10 platforms. And of course, there will be 10 platforms. The question is just if there's one dominating or if there's many. So. But you go on well, with your question because it's it's a great topic. Well, I, I misunderstood you, but the, the challenge there, I think it's something we, I believe as you, it could go with one platform. Looking backwards, looking at competition, American buy-ups, unicorns always being bought up by Americans and so on and consolidated. But the world would need multiple platforms. We don't need one euro in this sense. It will influence life so much. Mm. 
So that's something we can uh, look towards in uh, the Nordics where we are better at collaboration uh, yeah. than um, can't always buy each other up. It doesn't yeah, work I, that way. I completely agree with you, Rick. I think it's a great point. And then there's the other part around multiverse. It's uh, we are, even though we all love it, uh, we are still the few that knows about it, that have experience of it. We are surrounded by people who always have it, uh, which makes us believe that it will be like that for everyone. The opinion of the people and how they like to have it can be very different. And the challenge is to create a society with, where these two goes together. Yeah. So uh, and actually standing, even though commercial seems to be the go on for, for how you can finance these things, it's counterproductive. Uh, mm. So I would rather make an app excellent for the purpose I have in mind that I say maximum, like Tristan does, maximum of 15 minutes a day to improve mm. your day. And then you go outside and you can enjoy the sunshine or whatever weather it is. And if I get my wish, there are times of the day where it's silence. Because mm. that, 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 that's the kind mm. of what, what are we actually striving to do? Mm. If we want to change society, we as companies have to put the values up as well mm. and influence people. How do you want it? Yeah. Instead of the other way around, where you do research and say, hey, people want cheap food. No, they don't. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they don't want to spend all the money on food, uh, but they want good quality food. Yeah. Everyone wants that. I, I can't uh, believe you're staying for so long. Uh, I thought I got to switch off at 10, it's 10, 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know it's a cool topic. Oh, the people, the people are starting talking. Yeah. And it's morning, and I haven't shut Perfect. up for two hours. It's, it's, uh... <laughs> this is yeah. when the coffee starts kicking in, right? Yeah. That's ideation in its process. That's that's afterwards ideation, where you start a little Silicon Valley moment, <laughs> sharing a little bit of ideas, catching the interest, yeah. doing it digitally. Yeah. I guess we would have done it in a coffee shop uh, queue uh, if we were in Silicon Valley. My, yeah. my question to you, Jorn, is how many meetings did you miss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm one of these that that uh, like to do many things at the same time and all of that. But but I actually think, you know, I, I, I completely buy Rick's point here that this talk afterwards <laughs> is good and valuable. It, when it's one screen, it's more difficult to have more than one person at a time actually talking. But the mingle effect, that's where business happens. And, you know, that's where Investor Breakfast Club as a physical arena was so fantastic because I never did more meetings in my life than in the 30 minutes after the physical Investor Breakfast Club. Mm, exactly. Because, yeah. you know, angels are money now, business now, invest now. That's it. And, and, and for the rest of you listening now, uh, Jörn was on our, our after party uh, two weeks ago uh, after AIM. <laughs> uh, and uh, my plan was to quit at 11 at night. Uh, at 12 o'clock, when I switched on the light and switched off the music, what did Jörn do? <laughs> Switch back off the light and on with the music. <laughs> 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 but that was a double effect, though. I mean, one thing is, uh, you, 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 you should be a night owl and try it. I know you are. But but the, the, the good thing is, you know, one, I mean, you had a fantastic, this AIM, the AI event you held in Oslo two weeks ago was fantastic. And, uh, and, uh, the after party was as good as it was pre-pandemic. So why turn off light at midnight? Come on, right? And so turn on light. But but also, you know. Yeah, one and a half hour slack. I think uh, the last one left at uh, 12.30. And that was you, I think, Jörn. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it's also, I, I think many of us have this, you know, the, the mingle thing, the people thing after the pandemic, two years without it. I mean, I think we all need it on some level right That's and and great. here it's not only people and good and smart people but it, it's also real business in the room i i did a lot of business that evening so <laughs> thanks to you guys same here yeah. so thanks a lot and that's the idea with the mingling. Uh, and I hope that if you can only do the after parties without doing the big event in advance that would be perfect right <laughs> <laughs> combination it's a combination stefan I'm so sorry, I have to jump off for another meeting. Bye. Yeah. Use our teams as well. So, well, next unfortunately, meeting. we need to close down. We need to close down, but <laughs> uh, thanks a lot uh, for, for joining us today. And yeah. uh,
Did we set the date for uh, for the next one, number 20? Uh, it will be in July, June. Yeah, middle of June. June middle of June. So, so uh, yeah. we'll distribute the link uh, when it's done, but it's in a uh, yeah, month and a half. Yeah. So, see you then. All right. Until then. Bye. See you. Bye, bye. Bye. See you. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Nerea. <laughs> You're on mute. Stefan, yeah. the, I thought the dialogue here was quite interesting. The dialogue. Was, I'm trying to copy it, but it's not so easy. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll send it to you. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is it easy for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. problem. I'll, I'll get it at the long script. Yeah, yeah cool. Script. There were several of the comments here that were, I would like to have a look at closer and stuff. And, uh, yeah, so and that's yeah. why we have Nerea with us, because Stefan and I obviously don't have time to read the comments. <laughs> so it's going to be very interesting to read it now. Oh, yeah, I, I know. I thought there was a lot of good there, but good. All right, check it off. See Thank you. you. Bye. Thank Bye. you, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for running this. So, uh, yeah. You are mute. <laughs> uh, okay, good. yeah. I know I have it on Teams, but I want to copy and paste anyway. <laughs> Just uh, wait a bit. Come back from after. Just bara... mm. Okay. So we, we, bara... have, we have to remove the last uh, participants that refuse to leave. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, sometimes they are they, ha having the they left the, the they move. Go for something. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Quick wrap up. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Nerea? Happy? It was. Yeah, I liked it a lot. It was very interesting. The dynamics, the people, the people talking with like among each others, and Flo must be super happy because they got like so much attention today. Like everybody was so into the idea, and like like the the chat afterwards, it was mainly about them, which is great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And yeah, how how do you feel about it? I haven't. I I can't compare with others or like other yeah, business. As you understand, it's an incredibly tight uh, and compact show, right? So a lot of speakers and pitches and and content in a very very short time. So we have to be extremely nazi uh, on how we run it, right? Yeah. yeah. And I th it went like clockwork. Yeah. Uh, it went very well, actually. Yeah. yeah, I was checking the times and they were very good. Like, yeah, yeah. and and it's People very respected pretty much. And the chat is uh, complimenting uh, the speakers. Mm. Uh, so when you sent the link to the web pages and 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 so on, and they are sending the LinkedIn profile, everything gets so much better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so that's a good thing. So that we will do the next time as well. Um, and just as soon as someone starts to talk. In with the link uh, to the, their companies and or to whatever they're working yeah. on. Yeah. I I didn't put the links to their personal LinkedIn because I haven't. Oh, no, I no. didn't know if it, that was violating their privacy. So that's that's why I put the company's websites yeah. and the companies the companies LinkedIn, but not their personal. Unless when they were saying, please find me on LinkedIn, then I then I put it, but oh. not before because I didn't know if I was violating some privacy rules. No, no. Yeah. But no, but um, perfect. A, yeah. a quick fix if there's a lot of noise uh, is mute all. Uh, but that means you also mute me and Stefan, but that's fine because we can that's, unmute all fast. I yeah. wanted, when there was that cry, baby crying, I was trying to find them, but they were buried at the bottom and I didn't want to mute everyone because I have to find the other person. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay because if you yeah. mute everyone, it takes us a second to unmute ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And that's normally yeah, so I, for where the noise comes from. Mm. Yeah, I'll do that next time then because I was trying to find the person like I couldn't find it going uh, down because at that moment we were so many. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. always someone that I was trying to to keep everyone mute, mm -hmm. but that person escaped. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it happens. Yeah, it happens. Always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when and with 70 people, yeah. it, of course, it will be uh, noises. But uh, okay. A no, good no uh, quality check on the quality of the content is if people leaves. Uh, so you, so you mm -hmm. see normally that you have X amount of people and then it drops um, yeah. through, uh, the event. This is normal curve, right? What I saw here, it it was stable. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, it were, were maximum 69 at some point, but the 66, most of the time between 66 and 69, because there were people jumping in and out the whole that's time. Extremely stable. And that means people don't get bored. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we provide interest all the time. Yeah. Uh, to, to, so I think the, the format works, actually. Yeah. I think yeah. So. Yeah. 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 People stay the whole time and they only left bear like after 20 minutes after we should have finished so i guess people had meetings that they have to be but leave but they were very engaged yeah yeah so this was good oh. so now on, until next time you know how how it goes <laughs> yes now i know what to think <laughs> yeah then you can also prepare the the the, the speakers web pages beforehand exactly exactly yeah. i i did prepare like some some this morning but some i couldn't find on linkedin and then i didn't prepare what i didn't prepare is the website but i you pasted one and i thought okay but i'm gonna do the rest so i did the rest but i didn't prepare the websites which is a very good idea so now i will have that ready beforehand yeah perfect uh, i didn't tell you as well so <laughs> yeah. okay thank learning you. on the process into the next uh, meeting here thank you very yeah, much i have meeting with sandra now as well <laughs> see have you soon bye-bye <laughs>